Hey you guys, this is uh, Glenn from Glenn's Reptiles. I'd like to uh, share with you some updates on some of my uh, projects that are going on. Uh, some of them are um, some pretty rare animals that only a few people uh, in the country have. And uh, they've grown quite a bit, and so I wanted to give you an update on how things are going. Check this out. So these are my uh, Peruvian calico snakes. And uh, this is the pair, and they've grown quite a bit since I've had them. Um, they are just wonderfully docile snakes. Super great to keep. Um, cute little guys. This is the male, significantly smaller than the female, which is um, part of what uh, is consistent with their species. Sexual dimorphism. Um, the uh, the female in my set also is a little less black. You can see the male, thinner, is more black. And he's more of a yellow gold and she's more of an orange color. But obviously very similar in look. But they're great snakes, they're really uh, great eaters. They're mellow. They are snake eaters, so um, I have heard when you put them together to breed, you want to keep an eye on them and make sure you don't end up losing a male in the process. But uh, yeah, Peruvian calico snakes. And uh, I'll put scientific names and stuff on the in the description in case you care a little bit more about the details. There they are. always love to show off these guys. These are my Madagascar cat-eyed snakes. Uh, again, female is much larger than the male. Um, this is my big girl. She's uh, a very large adult, has produced babies every year for the last seven or eight years. She's actually gravid right now. I don't know how well that comes across on the camera, but she uh, actually, I think she just did her pre-lay shed, so she probably does not appreciate me putting her on camera. You know, this is when they're carrying a lot of weight. So anyway, this is a male, a little bit smaller. Um, but again, these snakes are great feeders, although they will go on long feeding strikes and you just have to be okay and comfortable with that. And then also, um, they just have these incredible eyes See if I can get, I won't focus, get up close. Um, but they have fascinating heads and beautiful eyes. Come on, focus on that. There we go, that's maybe it. Um, but beautiful snakes, Madagascar cat-eyed snakes. Super easy to breed, super easy to keep. They stay, this is very large adults right here. Um, and they're super docile. They are rear fanged, uh, mildly venomous. Uh, I have heard a couple of accounts of people who seem to be allergic to their mild venom and have had some significant swelling um, with a bite. Um, but it's, in my experience, it is very hard to get them to bite you. Um, I've only been bit uh, two or three times and I've had hundreds of these. And uh, one was a feeding where I was, I'm so confident with them, I was holding a mouse in my hand and the snake accidentally bit my fingers. Um, and then every other bite, which is two or three, has been from sexing babies when they didn't appreciate the, the tail being squeezed. So there's my pair, Madagascar cat eyes. Uh, if you don't have some in your collection, you need to get them. They're awesome.
Here's a Madagascar cat-eyed snake with a clutch of eggs she's very proud of. Look at her smile. Here's one of my royal diadem snakes. Uh, these guys are in the process of growing out to be old enough and big enough to breed. Uh, but they've started to go through the color transition. They started out uh, an attractive but rather simplistic sort of uh, tan pattern. Now they've developed these black splotches and developing some darker reddish color on the head. Uh, but they're a fun snake to keep. Uh, they're a little bit jumpy. Um, if you handle them regularly, they'll, they'll settle down a bit. Um, they have been great keepers for me. They do uh, huff and puff at you a little bit, um, but really never truly very aggressive. Um, and I've got a trio of just this normal pattern and then I also have a male uh, melanistic version which is pretty cool looking animal uh, grab him out for you Come on. There you go, little fella. so here's the the melanistic fascinating morph of these guys. I believe he will get more and more black, but he started very similar. Uh, very, it looked very much like um, the, the, the others as hatchlings. And then as they get those black spots, he just gets black all over. Um, so you can see pretty dramatic difference between these two. Royal Diadem Snakes. These are rat snakes. And uh, fun animals to keep, not all that common. There's a few folks that have them around. They used to be a little more popular. Used to be a little more common. I think they will be again, because uh, more and more people are starting to keep them. And then we'll get more and more breeders and Pretty soon, I think we'll be back in uh, to where they're not so difficult to get a hold of. So, beautiful snakes, royal diadem rat snakes. These are my black-headed spotted whip snakes. This girl is het for black-headed and she just got mad at me because she tried to get away from me and I pulled her back. So you can hear her hissing. But that huffing and puffing is uh, generally a threat and if they ever do decide to strike at you, they don't really bite. Um, but for the most part, it's just letting, them, letting you know they're not happy. So this is... Um, the hat, and you can see these these have gotten much bigger if you see some of my other videos of them. Um, these are my two big girls that are ready to breed. Unfortunately, last year I lost my male. So I got an, another male that I'm growing up, and hopefully next year he'll be ready to go. But uh, these guys have grown quite a bit. Quiet, I'm trying to make a video. People aren't going to know how nice you are. You're all huffy like that. Show me. Oh, wow. that's a good one. <laughs> right into the microphone. Um, so, there's the normal. She's trying to draw the attention to herself because she knows the black-headed ones get all the normal attention. 
These black-headed morphs, by the way, do occur in the wild. This is not something that was produced through um, captive breeding. This is a wild caught variant. Um, and there it is. Beautiful animals. Now, take a look at their coloring. I'm going to show you. I have one that has more of a brown coloring as opposed to the more blackish or color uh, of the pattern. Um, I've got one female I'm growing out that has somewhat unique looking color. I'll show her to you in just a second. So here's this younger girl, uh, black-headed, uh, spotted whip snake, and you can see she's got sort of a red pattern to her, even on her head. Let's see if I can show you that. Instead of the black, there's definitely some red coming through there. Um, so, really beautiful animal, little different. Be interesting to see what she ends up producing. Um, but super excited about this project. These are incredible animals, super fun to maintain. And as you can see, very docile. Contrary <laughs> to that, the ones hissing at me. But beautiful animals. Yeah. So, black headed spotted whip snakes. I show you this pair of Molendorfi. They're getting pretty big, as you can see. Um, eating really well for me now. Um, beautiful animals. 100 flower rat snake, an Asian rat. I um, also have the hypo, uh, a pair of the hypo version of these. Um, but they're both very pretty in their own right. Maybe check out the tails. The tails are spectacular on these snakes. So they have red heads, um, these uh, banded red tails. Uh, they've got a variety of sort of coloration as you go down their body with their pattern. And they get to be a very good sized, pretty good sized rat snake, certainly. Um, so, these guys have grown a lot since my last video of them. They are getting pretty big. So, beautiful, beautiful snakes. Here's a hypo pair of Molendorfi. They're a little bit lighter, um, as hypomelanistic implies. Um, and certainly plenty of people would argue that they prefer the others because they lose a little bit of the red and get a little more orange. Although their color's a little brighter, it uh, kind of loses a little something, I think, from the, the very dark, deep red that is on the, on the normals. But they are beautiful animals, fun to keep. These guys have not grown quite as fast as the others. Um, and so they're a little bit smaller, but still a ton of size on them since the last time I made a video of them. And again, these are hypo Molendorfi rat snakes. 
Mollendorf's rat snakes. Um, also, 100 flower snakes. And I love that name because it sounds nice. <laughs> Every one of mine has a name, uh, is named after a flower. Um, so, here they are. Well, I'm showing off some uh, very nice, unusual colubrids. I thought I would share my Blue Baron's Racer. Uh, this is my male. This guy's looking pretty good. They are remarkably blue. Um, my theory with these guys is that the blue ones are simply azanthic versions of the green ones. Um, meaning it's a simple recessive trait and it also means they just have no yellow. If you add yellow to this snake it turns green and if you look underneath the throats of um, blues and greens you'll see that blues have no yellow and greens have a lot of yellow. So it's a theory. We'll think we're going to be proving it out pretty soon or disproving it as the case may be. But Baron's Racer Blue Baron's Racer. Obviously, everybody loves that little nose. Got a little Pinocchio's. Pinocchio nose. Well, I'm showing you some of my uh, rarer rat snakes. I thought I'd show you these guys I'm growing out. Uh, this is a Japanese forest rat snake. And uh, they are very sweet snakes and really cool pattern um, and really neat colors. Um, really nice animals. So these are Jap Japanese forest rat snakes. had these guys for a little while. They've grown quite a bit while I've had them. They were tiny when I got them. Um, but they still got some more growing to do. 